Hi, I'm Nadia Dunn. Welcome to the Reverse Logistics Association's European Summit 2022 here in Amsterdam. Joining me is Janina from Fernify and the Circular Economy Club here in Amsterdam. Thanks so much for being here, Janina. It's lovely to see you. Now, tell us about those companies and your role within them. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I volunteer for the Circular Economy Club. The Circular Economy Club is a global organization that is not for profit and open for everyone who is interested in the circular economy. It's basically a network. So anyone who is passionate about circular economy or is interested in the circular economy can join the local network for free. Uh, so there are chapters all around the world. Uh, I'm running the chapter in Amsterdam. Uh, so basically providing a network for people who are interested or passionate or already in the field of circular economy to connect. And we all know that network means a lot and it also helps to accelerate uh, the circular economy. And that's what we're, uh, yeah, the, the, this is why this was founded by Anna Tauri a few years back. And then um, I work for Fernify. Uh, Fernify uh, is um, a company that makes uh, circular uh, spaces. So we basically turn your sustainable um, vision into reality. So we uh, consult you, we, we design your space, we realize it, and we also tell stories about circular spaces. So if you think about redesigning an office, we start with an inventory and then make sure that materials come back in the loop uh, so we don't source from new. And tell us the, the link between circular economy and reverse logistics. Yes, um, so circular economy is all about maintaining a high value of materials and keeping materials in the loop. And the current system is linear from take, make, waste. And actually what enables a circular economy is reverse logistics. So actually being able to reuse, to refurbish, to, re to maintain and repair, this is all enabled by reverse logistics. So reverse logistics plays an enormous role in making circular economy happen. And it's for the interior design industry, but it also for any industry out there. If we really want to go fully circular, we need reverse logistics to be on board and we need to have the infrastructure in place to be able to, that, to so that materials can come back in the loop and that designers or other retailers can use the materials that are already in the economy and circulating. Ex and expanding that sustainability option for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tell us about sustainability within the industry. Um, so currently in the design industry uh, that we are working in, uh, sustainability it's still uh, seen sometimes as a hindrance. Uh, so uh, sometimes it's seen as uh, that circularity or sustainability compromise aesthetics because maybe we cannot pick everything from a catalog and get it in a perfect condition uh, delivered from all around the world. Um, and that's something that we are constantly um, looking to reshape this image, that circularity actually does not compromise aesthetics, that actually we can reach the same look and feel by sourcing local, by sourcing second life, uh, by making sure that the products that come back are high quality and maintained, refurbished, uh, what is, whatever fits the new look and feel. Uh, and that, uh, that is something that uh, definitely is uh, still a challenge in the industry. And what are the challenges uh, within the design industry around reverse logistics? I think um, especially the understanding that design companies usually don't have the means to provide the reverse logistics infrastructure. So we actually rely on cooperation and on partners. So if you think about the design industry, I am an architect. Uh, I work in a design company. The, a big company is 60 people. So we're actually talking about company sizes that actually cannot provide necessarily the means of uh, logistical infrastructure as well as warehouses mm -hmm. um, that bigger companies can. And that's, uh, I think, some, something that the design industry relies on, that cooperation, that bigger companies also go on board and actually then cooperate mm -hmm. with other industries that might not have the means uh, to go circular on their own or to buy a warehouse on their own because yeah. it's, of course, something that uh, requires more... Uh, investment. And what does it mean coming to an event like this for Fernify and the Circular Economy Club? It's definitely um, always enriching to meet so many like-minded people who work in the same sphere and also work very differently. So we as an interior design company uh, don't have a focus on technology necessarily and here at this conference it's 
So interesting to also meet the different strategies that go uh, around reverse logistics that we in the interior design industry don't necessarily have yet. Uh, and that's super enriching, definitely, to see. And if you could describe this event in one word, what would it be? Enriching. <laughs> I thought you were going to pick that one. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Yanina. It's been really lovely. And enjoy the rest of the events. Yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you.